Hi guys, this is Nilesh from IDZO. Today let's look at the problem of detecting the start of the loop in a linked list. We'll solve this problem in order of n time complexity. Let's look at an example to understand this problem. Say we are given this linked list. As you can see, there is a loop in this linked list which starts at node 2. So the problem statement is, if we are given this linked list, we have to return the pointer to the highlighted node which basically is the start of the loop. The approach to solve this problem is basically a two-step approach. In the first step, we detect the loop in the linked list. Once we detect the presence of loop in the linked list, in the second step, we detect the start of that loop. Let's now look at the first step of this approach, that is detecting the loop in the linked list. We are going to use this algorithm. In this algorithm, the first step is, we basically initialize two pointers, a slow pointer S and fast pointer F to start of the list. A slow pointer s and fast pointer f are initialized to start of the list. In the second step, what we do is, we move pointer s one node at a time and we move pointer f two nodes at a time. And while advancing pointer s and pointer f in step 2, if at some point these pointers point to same node, then we say that there is loop in the list, otherwise we say there is no loop. Let's try to visualize this algorithm for more clarity. In the first step, we have initialized both pointers S and F to start of the list. We advance S by one node and F by two nodes until they meet or F reaches end of the list. If F reaches end of the list, then we know that there is no loop in the linked list. So what we do is, we advance S by one node and F by two nodes. We check if S and F are pointing to same node. They are not and F also has not reached the end of the list. We again advance S by one node and F by two nodes they are not pointing to the same node. We repeat this step. Now S points to 4 and F points to 7. We repeat this step. Here again they are not pointing to the same node. We again repeat this step. Now at this point, both S and F pointers are pointing to same node 3 and therefore we say that there is a loop in this linked list. Please note that if there would not have been any loop in the linked list, then F would reach the end of the linked list before meeting S. In that case, we say that there is no loop. So we have used this algorithm to detect the loop. Having detected the loop in the linked list, let's now see how we can detect the start of the loop. That would be node 2. The first step to detect the start of the loop is, we move S to the start of the list. So S is now pointing to node 8, which is start of the list. The second step of this algorithm is, we move pointers S and F forward, one node at a time, until they meet. Note that, Pointer F is also moved forward one node at a time and not two nodes at a time. We repeat step number 2 until pointers S and F meet. Let's try to visualize step number 2 now. So S and F both are incremented by one node. Are they pointing to same node? No. So we again repeat step number 2. Are they pointing to same node? No. So we again increment them by one node. We check if they are pointing to same node. No. Therefore what we do is, we again increment them by one node. Here at this point, they are now pointing to same node. If you notice, S and both S and F pointers are pointing to the start of the loop. That is precisely our third step. The node where they meet is the start of the loop. Just to quickly recap this algorithm, what we did is, after we detected the start of the loop, we moved S to the start of the list, and then we moved S and F forward one node at a time until they met. And at the point where they meet, we say that that is the start of the loop. Now you must be thinking as to why this algorithm works. Let's try to see why exactly this algorithm works. Let L be the length of the loop. We'll measure the distance in terms of number of links. So in this case, L would be 5. Let M denote the distance of the start of the loop from beginning of the list. So from node 8, which is beginning of the list, we measure the distance to node 2, which denotes the start of the loop. So in this case, M would be 4. Let k denote the distance of the meeting point of pointers S and F from start of the loop when they met for the first time while we detected the loop. Remember that while we are detecting the loop, S and F met at node 3, therefore k would be 1 because it measures distance from the start of the loop to the meeting point. So having defined this L, M and k, let's say when S and F meet for the first time, distance traveled by S is M plus PL plus k, M because it has to enter the start of the loop. Then let's say it completed p rounds of this loop, so that is pl, and it met pointer f at distance k from the start of the loop, at distance k from the start of the loop. Therefore, total distance traveled by s 
when it met f is m plus pl plus k similarly total distance traveled by f when it met s for the first time would be m plus ql plus k also note that q would be greater than p because f travels faster than s now recall that when s and f met for the first time while detecting the loop they were pointing to node 3 in the list we also know that f traveled twice as fast as s when they met for the first time therefore distance covered by f would be two times distance covered by s or 2 into m plus pl plus k would be equal to m plus ql plus k solving this equation we get m plus k equal to q minus 2p into l which implies that m plus k is integer multiple of length of the loop if length of the loop is l then m plus k is integer multiple of length of the loop now recall the algorithm that we used after s and f met for the first time what we did is we moved back s to the start of the loop so s is moved back to the start of the loop f is kept at the same meeting point that is it is pointing to node 3 and s is pointing to node 8 and then in the second step we moved both s and f forward one node at a time until they met now note that when this pointer s reaches the start of the loop that is node 2 it would have covered distance of m links now when we are moving this pointer s we are also moving this pointer f forward one node at a time therefore when this s covers distance of m links from start of the loop f would have also covered distance of m links from this position right now recall that f was placed at the point which is at distance k from the start of the loop therefore when it travels m links it is at distance m plus k links from the start of the loop this k denotes the offset of the pointer f from the start of the loop when it started moving when s covers distance of m from the start f also covers distance of m but it was placed at distance k from the start of the loop therefore in all it has traveled m plus k links from the start of the loop and m plus k is integer multiple of length of the loop therefore we can say that f must have reached the start of the loop when s has covered m or when s has reached start of the loop so the meeting point of s and f must be start of the loop hopefully the explanation of why this algorithm works is clear now once you understand this algorithm implementing this algorithm in code is trivial please let us know in the comment section if you have any queries or feedback please don't forget to like comment and share this video thank you and cheers